Goblin. How did it go? Okay. Hello and welcome. At this time, I ask that you please turn all electronic devices to vibrate. Madam Majority Leader, we are ready to begin. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of March 25th, 2021. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo, and I'd like to thank you for joining us at this virtual meeting of the New York City Council. If you would like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Please join us for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We'll begin with roll call. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Blessed and present. Morelli. Present. Brannon. I'm here. Brooks Powers. I'm sorry, Council Member Brooks Powers. Here. Thank okay. you. Cabrera. Here. Kid. Constantinides. Carnegie. I'm here. Thank you. Deutsch. Here. Dharma Diaz. Here. Present. Ruben Diaz. Drum. Here. Eugene. Gennaro. Here. Gibson. Blessed afternoon, I'm here. Jonai. Present. Gordenchik. I'm here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lander. Here. Levin. Here. Levine. Here. Lewis. Present. Mizell. Here. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. I'm here. Moya. Present. Perkins. Present. Powers. Present. Reynoso. Present. Riley. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Rose. Present. Rosenthal.
Salamanca. Present. Traeger. Ulrich. Alone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. I'm here. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. I'm here. <clears throat> Madam Majority Leader, we have a quorum. Thank you so much. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Rabbi Arya Katzen, the Executive Director and Spiritual Leader of Russian American Jewish Experience, located at 2915 Ocean Parkway in Brooklyn. Thank you. We are gathered virtually, and even though each of us is in a separate location, we are nevertheless united. We are united in our commitment to serve the people of this great city of New York. We all share the pain of the families who have lost their loved ones in this terrible pandemic, and wish a full and speedy recovery to the sick. We also feel the pain of isolation, poverty, and divisiveness that in different ways have affected us all. I am deeply moved today because exactly 40 years ago, I emigrated from the Soviet Union and for the first time celebrated Passover, not only as the exodus of my people from Egypt, but also my personal liberation from Soviet slavery. I share the experience of all immigrants who arrived at the shores seeking liberty and justice for all. I'm a Russian Jew. Many members of my family and millions of my people were murdered by the Nazis during the Holocaust. While the survivors became targets of discrimination and cultural genocide under the brutal communist regime, what made these crimes possible was that the tyrants first suppressed the freedom of speech. People were scared to protest hatred, terrified to protect each other. Passover is a holiday of freedom, but in Hebrew, Pesach hints that the very basic freedom of all is the freedom of speech. Because Pesach also means the mouth speaks. On Passover, we speak with our families and friends, sharing the story of freedom and love for others. There are more than 600 languages spoken in New York. We need to be courageous to express ourselves in our unique way. And we need to be respectful to protect the rights of others to express themselves without fear, even when we disagree with them. Nazis and communists committed their crimes because they just followed orders. They were scared of their tyrants and served their dictators, not their citizens. They served themselves, failing to feel the pain of their people. May God give us a loving and understanding heart to feel the pain of the oppressed, respecting the image of God in every human being, regardless of faith, color, or race. May we see the good in others, and in that merit, reveal the greatness within ourselves. May God bless us with courage to serve our people, every single one of them, and elevate them all from despair to hope and from slavery to freedom. God bless America and the great city of New York.
Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that very timely prayer um, and for giving us so much hope and inspiration through your own challenges that you've been able to share with us today. At this time, I would like to call on Councilmember Chaim Deutsch to spread the invocation on the record. And I thank you so much, Rabbi Katzen, for being with us today and for sharing your words of wisdom um, with each and every one of us. Councilmember Deutsch. Uh, thank you, Majority Leader. In just over 48 hours, Jewish people across the globe will welcome the holiday of Passover. What better way to head into the important holiday of Passover than to hear those remarkable words from Rabbi Aryeh Katzin, who himself celebrated 40 years of freedom from the Soviet Union. Rabbi Katzin is the executive director of RAGE, the Russian American Jewish experience. He is a spiritual leader to young people in the immigrant community, guiding and educating them about life, religion, and righteousness. When Rabbi Katzin immigrated from the, from the former Soviet Union and settled in Brooklyn, he immediately got to work establishing a welcoming com community for his fellow immigrants. He founded the Sinai Academy to teach children about their heritage, and he established a Russian language newspaper to connect members of the growing community with each other. Rabbi Katzin is a fixture in Southern Brooklyn community and a role model to thousands. It is an honor to know him and to be inspired by his resilience and strength. Thank you for all those inspiring words, Rabbi Katzin, and I wish you and all who are celebrating a Chag Kasha V'Sameach, which means a happy, meaningful holiday. I also want to wish all those who are celebrating Easter a joyful and peaceful holiday. And with Ramadan, uh, just several weeks away, I also want to wish all those observing a meaningful and blessed month. God bless you all. Thank you so much, Councilmember Chaim Deutsch. We appreciate you sharing your treasures from your community with the entire city of New York. Thank you, Majority Leader. <laughs> we will now move into the adoption of minutes. None. Messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. M294, certification of election of Selvina N. Brooks Powers, new council member, 31st district. Congratulations to our new colleague, received, ordered, printed, and filed. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. M295, Sidem Street rezoning. Thank you at this time, I'm asking for the clerk to take a roll call vote on this single land use call-up. Again, we're just voting on this land use call-up item. Good afternoon, Adams. I vote aye. Rosenthal. I vote aye. Thank you. Ambry Samuel. Aye. Ayala. I vote aye. Did you hear me? Oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Baron. I vote aye. Borelli. Aye. Brannon. Aye. Brooks Powers. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. I vote aye. Constantinidis. Carnegie. I vote aye. Thank you. <clears throat> Deutsch. I vote aye. Dharma Diaz. I vote aye. Ruben Diaz. Me? Drum. I vote aye. Thank you. Eugene. I vote aye. Gennaro. Yes. Gibson. I vote aye. Jonai. Aye. You. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye. Halos. Aye. 
Baku. I. Kozlowitz. I. Lander. I vote I. Levin. I. Levine. I vote I. Lewis. I vote I. Mizell. Council member Mizell? Yes. Thank you. Menchaka. Aye. Miller. Councilmember Miller, I believe you're muted. Councilmember Miller. Councilmember Miller, can you hear us? Absolutely. You know, we virtually live well. So. Councilmember Council Miller. Councilmember Miller. Council yeah, Miller. Definitely. Let's Absolutely. mute Councilmember Miller and move on. Let's do that. Okay, we'll come back. Moya. I vote aye. Perkins. Aye. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Riley. I'm sorry, Councilmember Riley. Vote aye. Thank you. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Rose. Aye. Thank you. Salamanca. I would aye. Thank you. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Valone. Aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Thank you. Jaeger. Aye. Thank you. Constantinidis. Aye. What does that mean? Uh, Council Member Miller. Aye. Thank you. Matteo. Aye. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye. Today's land use call-ups have a vote of 47 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Thank you. Today's land use call-up is adopted. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon. Welcome to our stated meeting today. Spring is finally here. Better days are hopefully ahead for our city and country. More people are getting vaccinated daily. It's becoming easier for friends and family to gather safely and the federal stimulus package will soon be on its way to help us recover. But COVID-19 is not our city's only problem. We still have a crisis when it comes to the distrust between police and communities. And we still have a lot of work to do to build accountability in the NYPD and reform the nation's largest police force. Today, the council is taking some steps toward that goal. This is ongoing work that won't end with today's votes. We also have a bill today that helps commercial tenants by extending, pan, uh, extending a pandemic protection that we uh, voted on last year. But sadly, COVID-19 is still very much a reality in New York City. As of yesterday, 30,793 people, New Yorkers, have died from COVID-19. It's important for us to continue to remember the New Yorkers that we've lost and the loved ones that they've left behind. Today is also the anniversary of two tragedies that forever changed our city. The Triangle Shirtwaist Factory Fire 
in Manhattan in the Happy Land Social Club fire in the Bronx. In 1911, the fire at the Triangle Shirtwaist Company factory in Greenwich Village killed 146 workers. These were mostly women and girls, young Jewish and Italian immigrants working in sweatshops. The tragedy started the American labor movement by exposing the horrific and dangerous working conditions that these workers and women endured. And as we continue to fight for workers' rights, we remember the lives lost in the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire. Today, we also remember another New York City tragedy. As I said, in 1990, 87 people were killed in an act of arson at the Happy Land Social Club in the Bronx. The club was ordered to be closed because of building violations dating back to 1988, including lack of fire exits. And while we continue to improve oversight of bad landlords, we must remember the victims of the Happy Land Social Club fire. I also want to take a moment to acknowledge some other sad losses in our city. I'm sad to say that we had another on-the-job death on February 26. Scott Keegan, a sheet metal worker, died after falling from an upper floor of the NYU Langone Ambulatory Care Center in Manhattan. He was 52 years old. Last week, we lost retired police detective Patrick Caprice. He is... He, he, uh, Detective Caprice survived being shot three times in 2005 after pulling over a car, but died on March 15th after going into medical distress. He was 58 years old. He was the epitome of bravery, service, and sacrifice, and our thoughts are with his loved ones as they mourn. Not even a week after the mass shooting in the Atlanta area, on Monday we learned of another heartbreaking massacre, this time 10 people were killed in Boulder, Colorado, including a police officer. No one should have to worry that a rage-filled gunman will kill them or their loved ones. We need gun control. We need it now. No more excuses. As I do in every state, I would like to recognize the lives of those who we recently lost to 9-11 related illnesses. We've lost retired FDNY Captain Frank Portel. He was 51 years old. Retired firefighter Joseph Boyle, who volunteered in the cleanup efforts at the World Trade Center. Retired police officer Timothy Motto, he was 63 years old. We are sending our deepest condolences to their families and friends. So let us pause for a moment of silence for the lives that we've lost to this pandemic, to the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire, the Happy Land Social Club fire, the Colorado mass shooting, and for sheet metal worker Scott Keegan, Police Officer Detective Patrick Caprice, Fire Captain Frank Portel, Police Officer Joseph Boyle, and Police Officer Timothy Motto. Thank you. Before we dive into our agenda, I want to take a moment to welcome to the council our newest colleague, Council Member Selvina Brooks Powers. She represents Council District 31, which includes Laurelton, Far Rockaway, Springfield Gardens, and other great neighborhoods. Council Member Brooks Powers replaces the now Queensboro President Donovan Richards, and we welcome her. We're so glad we are uh, that you are at your first stated meeting. We look forward to working with you and supporting you. Congratulations, Council Member Brooks Powers. Welcome to your first stated meeting of the New York City Council. Passover begins on Saturday at sundown. At the Seder table, the Jewish people recount how they became free after hundreds of years of slavery and bondage. So to all those who celebrate the Festival of Freedom, uh, I want to say have a happy Passover and may you have a peaceful and meaningful holiday. Next week is also, as Councilmember Deutsch said, the start of Holy Week, the week leading up to Easter. This is a time of reflection, hope, and renewal for many Christians, for all of those observing, I wish them a peaceful and reflective week and a happy Easter. Now on to our agenda. Uh, the Land Use Committee will be voting on several items. Arvern East, which is a HPD proposal of a series of applications to facilitate a new mixed-use development within the Arvern Urban Renewal Area. 
And this is in council member uh, Selvina Brooks Powers' district. And I wanna congratulate her on the approval of her first land use application. Lower East Side cluster, a UDAP and Article 11 tax exemption in Council Member Rivera's district. We'll also be voting on several HPD UDAP applications in Council Member Perkins' district. 50 25 Barnett Avenue rezoning in Council Member Van Bramer's district. 1099 Webster Avenue rezoning in Council Member Vanessa Gibson's district. Now, out of the Finance Committee, we'll be voting on a pre considered resolution number. 1583, sponsored by Councilmember Francisco Moya, which supports State Senate Bill 4482 and its companion bill in the Assembly 5092, which would impose a new tax on billionaires. The proposed mark to market tax would tax the increase in value of billionaires' assets at the same rate as other income. While New Yorkers struggle to make ends meet, the state's 120 billionaires are $87.7 billion richer than they were just one year ago. They, of course, can certainly afford to pay more, particularly when so many people continue to suffer from the COVID-19 pandemic. And that is why this resolution further calls for revenue generated from this tax to be used to establish a $3.5 billion excluded workers fund to assist the hundreds of thousands of workers who have been excluded from receiving benefits like unemployment insurance because of their immigration status or recent incarceration. Many of these workers were employed in essential jobs such as cleaning, home health care, food delivery, and many other jobs until many of them lost their jobs or became ill with COVID-19 and could no longer work. And the fact that they are barred from receiving benefits like unemployment insurance and other, other federal benefits is unjust and wrong. And I want to thank from the staff Noah Brick and Rebecca Chasen for working on that. Moving into our legislative agenda, first the council will vote on introduction number 2243A, sponsored by Councilmember Carlina Rivera. This bill extends Local Law 55, which suspended personal liability provisions in leases of businesses that were required to close as part of the state's efforts to control the spread of COVID-19. This meant that commercial landlords who were not getting rent could not go after an individual guarantor's personal assets, including their home. The council will vote today to extend the time frame on the protection from March 31st, 2021 to June 30th. And I wanna thank from the staff, Noah Mexler and Stephanie Jones. The next set of bills are part of a package to increase NYPD accountability and to reimagine public safety in our city. Our first policing bill is out of our governmental affairs committee and it will remove the NYPD's authority to revoke or suspend press credentials. Introduction number 2118A, sponsored by Councilmember Keith Powers, will transfer authority over press credentials from the NYPD to the Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment. This bill would eliminate the NYPD's authority to issue, suspend, or revoke press credentials and transfer that authority to MOM. Under this bill, MOM would be required to promulgate rules setting forth application procedures for press credentials, uh, criteria for the denial of an application, and criteria for the suspension or revocation of a credential. And from the staff, I want to thank C.J. Murray, Elizabeth Cronk, and Emily Forgione. Next, we have a bill from the Civil and Human Rights Committee, introduction number 2212A, sponsored by Councilmember Vanessa Gibson, will clarify that the Civilian Complaint Review Board has the power to investigate bias-based policing and racial profiling complaints made by the public. This bill is a direct result of the council's work to uncover the racist head of the NYPD's EEO division, James Cobell. It would empower the board to investigate past professional conduct of any police officer who was found to be engaged in bias. The bill would also require the NYPD to engage an independent consultant to review cases handled by the NYPD's EEO division. And I wanna thank from the staff, uh, Janita John, uh, uh, Jayasri Janapathy, Wiam Diori, Emily Rooney, Natasha Major, and Jonathan Maserano. Next, we're voting on a bill out of the Transportation Committee, introduction number 2224A, sponsored by Council Member Idanis Rodriguez, 
will require the Department of Transportation to create a crash investigation and analysis unit tasked with investigating, analyzing, and reporting on all vehicle crashes involving significant injury. In addition to its crash investigation functions, the unit created by this legislation would be responsible for public statements regarding serious vehicular crashes and would be required to make recommendations for safety improving changes to street design and infrastructure and to post quarterly reports regarding its crash reviews on the Department of Transportation website. The legislation also makes clear that nothing in the bill inhibits or interferes with the NYPD's ability to conduct criminal investigations. Many serious vehicular crashes would be prevented through changes to the design and infrastructure of streets and intersections following an in-depth analysis of the factors that led to a crash. However, at present, serious crash investigations are in the purview of the Collision Investigation Squad at the NYPD and a DOT liaison. These resources are deployed to conduct systematic investigations at fewer than 350 crash sites per year. And from the staff, I wanna thank Elliot Lynn and Annie Levers. Finally, out of the Public Safety Committee, we're voting on two bills and three resolutions. Resolution number 1538A, sponsored by Majority Leader Lori Cumbo, supports State Senate Bill 5252 and its companion bill in the Assembly 6012, which will provide final discipline authority over civilian complaints to the Civilian Complaint Review Board, removing the police commissioner's exclusive authority over discipline. The state legislation is sponsored by State Senator Jamal Bailey and Assemblymember Catalina Cruz. While the CCRB can recommend discipline against officers, the police commissioner has final authority over discipline and can choose to disregard these recommendations and may impose lesser or greater discipline or no discipline at all. Also resolution number 1547, sponsored by Councilmember Francisco Moya, supports State Senate Bill 6012 and its companion bill in the assembly 1951. And those bills are sponsored by State Senator Kevin Parker and assembly member Catalina Cruz respectively. The bills establish a residency requirement for police officers in cities with a population of 1 million or more residents, includes New York City. If passed, the legislation would require newly hired NYPD officers to live within one of the five boroughs of New York City. The last resolution, resolution number 1584 from the Public Safety Committee is on the adoption of a policing plan. In June, the governor issued an executive order requiring every jurisdiction in New York State to produce a policing plan by April 1st. If the council does not adopt a plan, the state is allowed to withhold state and federal pass-through funding to the tune of billions of dollars. The council only received the full draft of the mayor's plan on March 12th, so we have not had much time, but we did make some significant improvements. We removed old accomplishments and anything that increased the NYPD's footprint. We added deadlines and responsible parties. We enhanced public transparency by adding public notice and stakeholder engagement requirements. And one element that I'm really proud of is that we secured more than $70 million for initiatives to support and expand public safety alternatives to policing and incarceration and ensure that the city lives up to its commitments. That's $30 million for students, social, emotional, and behavior needs in schools, more than $18 million for mental health services and underserved communities. We're gonna triple our cure violence workforce by next summer. We added 5,000 new SYP slots for CUNY students. This plan is far, far from perfect, but I think we as a council did the best we could in making some improvements under an extraordinarily difficult timeline. I wanna thank uh, all the members that pushed the administration here, particularly the Black, Latino and Asian Caucus. And I really wanna thank council member Adrian Adams, the chair of our public safety committee in the midst of dealing with a personal tragedy. She worked on this nonstop uh, all over the administration, uh, pushing them, working with the staff, working with advocates. Uh, she did an incredible job and I'm really grateful to you, Adrian, for your leadership. In addition, we're voting on introduction number 1671A, sponsored by Councilmember Adrian Adams, the chair of our public safety committee, which will require the New York City Police Department to issue a quarterly report on all vehicle stops. The report would include the number of summonses issued, arrests made, vehicles seized, 
related use of force incidents and vehicles searched and whether consent was provided. This information will be disaggregated by precinct, race, ethnicity, and age of the driver. We're also voting on introduction number 2220A, sponsored by Council Member Steve Levin, to end qualified immunity for police officers. Qualified immunity is rooted in our nation's systemic racism. It was established in 1967 in Mississippi to prevent freedom riders from holding public officials liable even when they break the law. It denied those freedom riders justice and it has been used to deny justice to victims of police abuse for decades. It never should have been allowed. It should have been ended decades ago and it must end now in New York City. Introduction number 2022A will establish a local right of security against unreasonable search and seizure and against excessive force, regardless of whether such force is used in connection with a search or seizure. And again, I wanna thank from the staff, Janita John, Emily Rooney, Pearl Moore, Natasha Major, and Jonathan Maserano. That is our agenda today. Uh, thank you all. With that, I turn it back to you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Speaker Johnson. We will now move into discussion of general orders. As a reminder, this section is only for items we will be voting on for general orders today. We will recognize council members who wish to speak by using the raise hand function in Zoom. Is Mr. Parliamentarian um, on the Zoom at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. If you could give further clarity so that we are clear on issues that can be discussed, legislative matters that can be discussed during this discussion of general orders, I think it would be helpful to all of the members. Yes, Madam Majority Leader. So we will be discussing at this juncture all items that the speaker just discussed with the exception of the following resolutions. Resolution 1538A, uh, having to do with uh, the police commissioner's exclusive authority over police discipline. Resolution 1547, requiring NYPD officers to live within the five boroughs. Pre-considered resolution 1583, which would establish the billionaire mark to market tax, pre-considered resolution 1584, uh, adopting a plan pursuant to state executive order number 203. So we will be discussing all items except for those resolutions. All discussion about those resolutions will take place during discussion of resolutions. Thank you so much for the clarity. Please wait before you begin your remarks for our Sergeant at Arms to announce he has begun the countdown clock. The Sergeant at Arms will alert you when your time has expired. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any council members registered to speak on the following legislative agenda? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council members Adams, Van Bramer, and Gennara. You may begin, Council Member Adams. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, before I begin my remarks, I just <clears throat> and congratulate my sister from Southeast Queens and our newest addition to the Women's Caucus, Council Member Sylvina Brooks Powers. She's passing her very first piece of legislation in the land use space today during her very first stated meeting. And that's a really, really big deal. Congratulations, Sylvina. I'm so, so happy to have you here. Madam Majority Leader, this afternoon we will vote on a number of groundbreaking police reform bills by the New York City Council that I believe will truly make a difference in our city. My bill, Intro 1671, will change how the NYPD records and reports on vehicle stops. The NYPD will be required to report on the number of summonses issued, arrests made, vehicles seized, and more. This information will be broken down by precinct, race, ethnicity, and age. This is very significant because stop and frisk was not the only tool that police have used to harass black and brown New Yorkers who can attest to what it's like to be stopped by the police and the consequences of those harmful interactions. We have no idea how bad this problem is in New York because the NYPD doesn't track it. They don't record many stops if there's no traffic ticket issued or arrest made at all. 
1671 remedies this by requiring the documentation of all vehicle encounters, which will shed light on who's being stopped and what happens as a result. I ask all of my colleagues to vote in favor of my bill, Intro 1671. And uh, I will add that it is not lost on me that we have now included another powers and another as, as well to add to the second DS that we have of this council. <laughs> we welcome the expansion of our colleagues. Thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Council Member Adams. And we continue to lift you up because you continue to do incredible work under such challenging circumstances. Council Member Van Bramer. Time Thank you very much. Now. It has taken five years to get to today's vote on building truly affordable housing in Sunnyside Gardens, the neighborhood I live in. The project before us today is 100% affordable and vastly improved from the one I rejected four years ago. Affordability levels represent the deepest we've seen in Sunnyside, with a set aside for formerly homeless families and many units at 40% of AMI with a maximum of 80% AMI. 32BJ has testified in favor of this project, something they did not do four years ago. I'm proud that we secured good jobs, good wages, with benefits for workers. The building height has been brought down and is now contextual. And while more progress needs to be thanks to Community Board 2, there is a real action plan of immediate improvements that FIPS is complying with. It should also be noted that CB2 voted unanimously against this project four years ago, but overwhelmingly in favor of this particular proposal. It also has the support of the Queensborough president. While some have used disingenuous arguments against this project, I will not deny homeless families and low wage workers a home by allowing the perfect to be the enemy of the good. We who proclaim ourselves progressives say we want to build truly affordable housing. And when we get the chance to do so, we should, particularly in expensive neighborhoods like Sunnyside. We who say we are progressives say we want to permanently house the homeless. And when we get the chance to do so, we must. Everyone must be welcome in the Sunnyside Woodside area that I am lucky enough to call home. And with this vote, we have a chance to say that emphatically. And those of us who are progressives and say we're for the Green New Deal should want to replace a surface parking lot with affordable housing and not allow NIMBY arguments to stop Hi. truly affordable housing to be built on this site. I'm proud to support it, ask my colleagues to support it. I want to thank Chairs Boya and Salamanca and their committees for already voting in favor of this project. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Van Bramer. Council Member Gennaro. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Leader. I, I feel compelled to go on the record regarding some of the very important bills that we'll be voting on today. First, regarding uh, proposed intro 2118. This bill affects the NYPD leadership, not the rank and file. And I think the department can take some hard questions from reporters. So I'll be voting yes on this, and I urge my colleagues to vote for it. I'll be adding my name as a uh, co sponsor. Uh, next, uh, proposed intro 2212 regarding the investigation of biased police officers. Uh, the NYPD had a stone bigot running its EEO division. So this council, I believe, has not only the right, but the obligation to pass this bill. I will vote yes on this bill. I urge my colleagues to do so as well. And I will add my name as a co-sponsor. Regarding proposed intro 2212, 4A about the DOT collision uh, squad. I support this bill and I urge my colleagues to support it. Uh, re <clears throat> um, regarding proposed intro 1671A, this bill seems to rest on the thesis that the police are engaging in racist behavior and profiling when it comes to traffic stops. I do believe this thesis needs to be tested and the collection of such data does have value to test this thesis. The question is how to test this thesis most efficiently without placing an undue burden on the department. I believe that a bill that mandates the collection of these data periodically in random precincts would yield the same validation or invalidation of this thesis for much less effort. I would happily, I would happily support such a bill. 
what this bill has written I see as an undue burden. So I'll be voting no and I urge my colleagues to vote no as well. Uh, we're going to propose intro 2220 uh, about ending qualified immunity. Uh, my, view, uh, my view is that constitutional rights are inviolable and to the extent that anyone could be allowed to invoke immunity in violating one's constitutional rights, uh, such that a person who has had their rights violated has no recourse to seek redress is, in my opinion, violative of the Constitution itself. Every member in this body took the same oath to uphold the Constitution. And by voting yes on this bill, I believe I'll be doing exactly that. I urge my colleagues to support this very important bill, and I'll be adding my name as a co-sponsor. Thank you for uh, being uh, uh, generous with my time. Thank you, Council Member Gennaro. We will now move to other members who wish to speak at this time. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there other members who wish to speak? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council Members Barron, Holden, and Chin. Council Member Barron, you may begin following the clock time. Time starts now. Uh, thank you, Madam uh, Majority Leader. I actually wanted to speak. Uh, I'll just explain my vote so that we can move the time along. Uh, thank you, Mr. Parliamentarian. Thank you. Okay, we will move to Council Member Holden. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, I need to express my extreme frustration with some of these so-called police reform bills that have made it on our agenda today for a vote. Once again, the City Council rushes through legislation that will have a serious impact on residents' public safety in the city. We live in an upside down town where wrong is right, cops are villains, criminals are victims, and virtues are vices. Some of the bills that we are voting on today will endanger the public and put our constituents in harm's way. This year alone, we've had 250 New Yorkers shot, which is over 40% higher than last year. Our constituents are begging us to handle the uptick in crime and violence in neighborhoods throughout the city. We are passing bills that will only make it more difficult for law enforcement to do their jobs, which is to protect and serve. This legislative body turns its back on policies that we know made New York the safest big city in the world for decades in favor of protest slogans. Our police officers are then sent out there with their hands tied. And some of my colleagues then have the nerve to accuse them of a slowdown, whether it's the ill-advised diaphragm law or, or our state legislators' reckless actions in Albany passing bail reform this city faces a crisis, and we are only making matters worse. This assault on the NYPD is an assault on our constituents. We need to start listening to the public we represent and govern in the real world, not Twitter echo chambers. The people who put us in office to represent their needs are crying for help. They feel unsafe walking the streets or riding the subways. Some of these bills are reckless, not well thought out, and will make New York City more dangerous. I am not opposed to all police reform, but the vast majority of our police join the NYPD for the right reasons to do a great job. In fact, fact, if you mention New York City to law enforcement officers from anywhere in the world, they will tell you that the NYPD is the gold standards. These bills would get more New Yorkers killed, both police and civilians, and result in New Yorkers not getting the help they need. Ending qualified immunity would discourage the best young men and women in our city from joining the police force. Ending it will make it harder to recruit young, bright young people to join the force. Even police officers acting in good faith could be held personally liable. Um, you know, it's, it's the vehicle stop reporting bill not only would place an unreasonable burden on police, but it would force them into an unworkable position of having to somehow ascertain the race and ethnicity, ethnicity of members of the public likely to result in greater tension. It's time to do our jobs and vote no on these bills, which our constituents expect of us. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Holden. We will now go to Council Member Chin. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, I know that we are, I support all the police reform bill that we are voting on today. And as the speaker said earlier, um, 
the city's policing reform process is not perfect. And in this council, I have joined my colleague in advocating for police reform for many, many years, starting with the Community Safety Act. And we will continue to do that. And we have been fighting for resources to support anti-violence program, our youth, and many more. And I am really saddened because of this vote today that my office and myself has been attacked on social media and my office phone has gotten inundated with phone call because of individual and group spreading misinformation. Our community, the Asian community has been under attack. And I am so proud that all my colleagues and community group have come together to support us, to stand with my community and ask how we can help. And now, how can these individual and so-called advocates out there, if you want to stand with us, why are you creating misinformation and attacking our community? The Asian, the anti-Asian hate crime task force, do you know, even know what that is? The officer working in there are volunteer. Our community are asking for more support to help them report the crime, to help protect them. We have to work together, not divide us. I mean, I myself is an Asian woman. And I'm getting attacked from Asian women feminists on my record of all the things that I have supported in the council. I mean, come on, let's Time expired. stop this and work together if we really want to stop hate. Language access is important in every city agency and especially in the police department. And we have to get that for our community. So let's work together and not fight against each other. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Chen. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. The next three are Council Members Rodriguez, Levin, and Borelli. I'd just like to remind members because the, the list is extensive for um, members to speak at this time, as well as during the vote. I know that members are also going to wish to speak. Um, as well as during the resolutions and uh, general discussion. So if we could stick to the time clock, I'm gonna to try to hold it a bit tighter because this meeting could go um, quite extensively if we don't. So I'll begin right now with Council Member Rodriguez. Time starts now. Thank you, Majority Leader. And I understand that by the same time, I feel that today is like one of those special day that all of us will be so proud of the legacy that we are living when it comes to police reforms. Uh, one of the bills that I want to talk uh, is the one that I had the opportunity to lead together with Speaker Johnson and other colleagues. The one that we transferred the, in the investigation squad unit from NYPD to DOT. Mm -hmm. It is time for all of us to understand that it, we will be able to get rid of the COVID-19 pandemic, hopefully very soon. However, there's another pandemic that has been killing so many great New Yorkers. Mm -hmm. And that's the one of hit and run. That's the one of crashes. That's the one where last year we had more than 44,000 people that they were victim of crashes in New York City. And an average of 300 people dying every year because criminal drivers are leaving the scene, many of them and all their unfortunately not understanding that the, our street doesn't belong to car owners but the street belongs to all of us. So and today is a great day as we are voting this bill that we transfer the investigation squad unit from, DOT, from NYPD to DOT. We heard our DAs, we heard the advocate, but also we heard transportation alternative, we heard family for safety street. I thank Speaker Johnson and thanks Mayor de Blasio also for getting his thing in the city hall to work with us and come out with a compromise so that we are voting this bill. Hoy estamos haciendo historia votando un proyecto de ley donde pasamos el control de la unidad que investiga los casos de choques, especialmente los de hit and run que ocurren en Nueva York de la policía al departamento de transportación. De esa forma haremos de las calles lugares más seguros para los peatones y los ciclistas. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Rodriguez. We will now go to Councilmember 
Levin? Time starts now. Thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm very humbled to be with you all today to vote on this remarkable set of legislation. I'm especially grateful to be sponsoring intro 2220A, which would end qualified immunity here in New York City. Qualified immunity has a very complex history as a legal doctrine, but it actually concerns a very simple and fundamental issue in our democracy. Since 1792, Americans have had the constitutional right under the Fourth Amendment against unreasonable searches and seizures. And we have had the right since 1868 under the 14th Amendment to due process under the law. Recognize that recognizing that people who have these rights violated need an actual recourse, Congress passed the Enforcement Act of 1871, also known as the Ku Klux Klan Act, in which Section 1983 established the right of action where, quote, every person who under the color of any statute, ordinance, regulation, custom, or usage of any state or territory or in the District of Columbia subjects or causes to be subjected any citizen of the United States or other persons within the jurisdiction thereof to the deprivation of any rights, privileges, or immunities secured by the Constitution and laws shall be liable to the party injured in an action at law, suit in equity, or other proper proceedings for redress. Seems simple enough. Fast forward 96 years to 1967 in a case Pearson v. Ray where a group of Freedom Rider clergymen were seeking to recover damages for their unconstitutional arrest in Mississippi in 1961, the Supreme Court established a judicial doctrine of qualified immunity, where a government employee is now granted immunity from a lawsuit if they demonstrate, quote, good faith in conducting an unconstitutional <laughs> stop and seizure. The Supreme Court further increased the hurdles to claim <laughs> seeking redress by allowing officers to invoke qualified immunity unless the unconstitutional act violated a, quote, clearly established law in 1982. Quoting Jay uh, Schweikert from the Cato Institute, quote, in I'm practice, excited. this legal standard is a huge hurdle for civil rights plaintiffs because it generally requires them to identify not just a clear legal rule, but a prior case with functionally identical facts. He goes on to say, quote, qualified immunity is one of the most obviously unjustified legal doctrines in our nation's history, close quote. I'll finish uh, my remarks uh, when I explain my vote. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Levin. Thank you uh, for bringing us that important history on this particular bill. Council Member Borelli. Time you, starts Mr. now. Thank you. Um, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that each of us, uh, each of us 51, are individually beneficiaries of qualified immunity ourselves. Uh, we each represent 170,000 New Yorkers, and collectively we, we represent over 8 million. And, and many of the decisions we make or actions we take can harm any one of them or any member of the public or anyone we employ. And yet we are also an in, personally and individually protected by qualified immunity. Uh, if we get sued, our general counsel will represent us. It doesn't cost us anything. Uh, and in fact, when, and I heard uh, Council Member Levin mention the 1982 case of Harlow v. Fitzgerald, that case wasn't even about police officers. Uh, it, it was about the staff of elected officials. So the modern doctrine of qualified immunity actually came out of a case um, involving White House staff. Uh, victims have recourse in New York City. The city has paid over $5 billion in the last five years in civil actions against the NYPD. So today, essentially, the council is saying that qualified immunity is good for us and good for other city employees, but it's not good enough for those New Yorkers who we ask to risk their lives to protect us and oftentimes engage with, with violent criminals who have no care or regard for our laws. So I would ask my colleagues to vote no on the qualified immunity legislation, or at least voluntarily forego your own qualified immunity if and when you are sued. So thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Borelli. Are there any other members, Mr. Parliamentarian, who wish to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council Members Reynoso, Miller, and Gibson. Council Member Reynoso, hold, you may begin. I'm going to hold my comments to the vote. Um, I have advice from the Majority Leader. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now have Council Member. I'm sorry, I couldn't read my own writing. Miller. Council Member Miller followed Miller by Council Anderson. Member Gibson. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, with respect to uh, intro 2224, 
uh, while I agree is well-intended legislation, uh, it is ultimately flawed. In this bill, we are voting to allow New York City DOT to be both judge and jury on our streets. They will design them and then they will be responsible for holding accountable those who, the failure of their design, and then maybe be responsible for who takes the blame. This agency has not been responsible for its own shortcomings. The Department of Transportation has run roughshod over New York City communities, community boards, civic associations, and residents, and is infamously unresponsive and prioritizes enforcement before outreach, education, and engineering. DOT job performance in recent years has been woefully insufficient. The agency fails at the most basic level to replace street signs, to fix street markings, and address basic safety concerns. It takes three years on average to get the speed hump evaluated and installed. This is not an agency prepared to handle more responsibilities. Let's me, let me also say, that particularly alarming that is particularly alarming that this legislation is moving in the spirit of police reform. This DOT has treated communities of color with borderline contempt, while white communities got bike share and fully built out bus lanes and capital infrastructure. Our communities were told to wait and then given punitive enforcement cameras instead. I cannot vote today to add another three million dollars to DOT's budget to allow this agency to duplicate the professional services provided by trained experts at the Collision Investigation Squad. We would be better off spending these resources with CSI to better support the work that they are doing. I would also note that all this, these are the sentiments of all three, all five expired. attorneys, uh, and they have resubmitted their testimony uh, in opposition to this legislation. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Councilmember Miller. We'll go, now go to Councilmember Gibson. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon, Speaker and all my colleagues. I wanna quickly speak in favor of one of the land use applications on 1099 Webster Avenue submitted by 1099 Webster Realty in my district. I'm very excited about this project. I've been working on it for over two years, located at the intersection of Webster Avenue and 167th Street in my district the Claremont community. And this project will include two residential buildings. One is a nine story building and the other is an 11 story building with a combined total of 238 residential units, affordable for the local residents as low as 27% of the AMI up to 80% of the AMI under the HPD's ELLA program. We will have a minimum of 10% of the units are three bedroom apartments, which I'm very excited about as we will also have uh, local set-asides at minimum 15% for formerly homeless families. We have about 30,000 square feet of commercial retail that will include medical facilities and supermarket, indoor parking, and all of the amenities that we truly need in the Bronx. I'm very grateful that we will have temporary construction jobs, permanent jobs, and a new partnership with local 32 BJ SEIU. Um, the applicant will work through Hire NYC and the MWBE Build Up Program, making sure that we hire locally. And a lot of these provisions are incorporated in a written document that we received at the council, the land use division, by the developer. I want to thank the Bronx Borough President, Ruben Diaz Jr., and his team for their recommendations, as well as Local Community Board 4 for all of their hard work in making sure that this is a project that we can all support that provides real affordable housing for residents of the Bronx, local set aside, as well as local hiring and MWBE provisions. I ask all of my colleagues to please support this legislation. And I wanna thank Raju Mann, Amy Levitan, Katie Sullivan, and everyone at the Land Use Division for all of their work on this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Gibson. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? No, Madam Majority Leader. All right. <laughs> we will now move into the report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Civil and Human Rights, intro 2212A, bias-based policing. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Governmental Operations, intro 2118A, press credentials. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LUs 733 and 734, 737 4th Avenue, rezoning. 
approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LUs 738 and Reso 1585 through LU 740 and Reso 1587, Arvern East. Couple of general orders. LU 741 and Reso 1588, Lower East Side Cluster. Couple of general orders. LU 743 and Reso 1589 through LU 747 and Reso 1593, various Harlem applications. Couple of general orders. LU's 748 and Reso 1594 and 749 and Reso 1595, 5025 Barnett Avenue rezoning. Couple of general orders. LU's 750 and Reso 1596 and 751 and Reso 1597, 1099 Webster Avenue. Couple of general orders. Report of the Committee on Public Safety, Intro 1671A, Traffic and Counter Reports. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 2220A, Ending Qualified Immunity. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections, Preconsidered Resolution 1582, Council Committee Changes. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Small Business, Intro 2243A, Protection for Commercial Tenants. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Transportation, Intro 2224A, Crash Investigation and Analysis Unit. Amended and coupled to general orders. And at this time, I'm asking for the clerk to take a roll call vote on all of the items coupled on today's general orders calendar. Adam. I will be voting aye on all with the exception of Intro 2224 for all of the reasons stated by Councilmember Miller. Thank you. And Bree Samuel. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you, Majority Leader. I want to first say welcome and congratulations to Councilwoman Brooks Powers. It took a lot for you to get here to this day, and this is your time. Congratulations to my colleagues for the package of bills that are being passed today. But I just have to make a comment. As a Black woman living in New York City, and currently living in one of New York's toughest neighborhoods, getting public safety right literally hits home. Um, what's amazing to me is how when you listen to some of the comments today, we are divided as a body, just as we have seen our country divided. And that's a fact. But we all represent very distinct constituencies because this is New York City and we are a very diverse city. So while I do appreciate all of the voices today, it is clear that we need to continue to have these public meetings, these public hearings, these public settings, so people can hear what is being said by all members. Again, I appreciate the voices, but sometimes I don't need certain people to speak for me, speak for your constituency. I appreciate you speaking for your constituency, not the entire city of New York. So I just wanted to say that, I felt compelled to say that, but I do thank my colleagues for the bills that you did introduce and that we are passing today. And with that, on those particular bills, I vote yes. Thank you, Councilmember Adrian Adams as well. Thank you so thank much. You. Councilmember Salamanca. I vote aye on all, thank you. Thank you. Ayala. Ditto on everything that council member Ampri Samuels just said, and I also vote aye. Baron. Uh, permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you so much. I want to welcome our new colleague, council member Brooks Ross. Welcome. In terms of the legislation that we're talking about today, I vote for the land use, I vote aye on all with the exception of 741. And I am abstaining on 743 and 744. In terms of the legislation, I vote aye on all and commend my colleagues on uh, making a stab at getting better conditions and better results for our communities in terms of the interaction that we have had with police, particularly where we have been subjected to uh, racist, discriminatory 
misconduct by police. And I'm voting, I'm, a, I'm voting no on intro 2212A. What this bill does, I think the intent is great, but it is addressing an issue and putting it into the CCRB, which is a body that has been shown to have not been able to overcome the hurdles and the, the uh, discrepancies and the lack of services and lack of support and the obstacles that have been put in their path. There was a former investigator for the CCRB who gave uh, opening remarks, who gave remarks during a press conference that was held yesterday. And he outlined many of the obstacles that CCRB investigators face. And there's a scripture that says, you don't put new wine in old wine flasks. So we're taking this good idea and putting it into the CCRB, which has been shown to not be effective, to not be able to be independent. And we're expecting that we'll get a different Fine. result. Fine. Thank you. We're expecting that we'll get a different result. Uh, I think that what's gonna happen is that it will burst the wine flask just as new wine does because they're not capable of adapting and adjusting and incorporating these kinds of plans, particularly when they're gonna rely on the police commissioner once again to select who the independent prosecutor is gonna be for those cases that they look into. For that reason, I'm voting no on 2212A, despite its good intent. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Barron. Borelli. Thank you. Uh, I vote aye on all except intros 1671A, 2118A, 2212A, 2220A, 2224A, 2243A, and I vote aye on all the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Brennan. Uh, with congratulations to uh, Councilwoman Sylvana Powers on her first stated and her first bill passed at her first stated, which is not an easy feat. Um, and with congratulations to, to all the folks who uh, have legislation today and, and the work continues. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Brooks Powers. Um, I vote aye on all and I ask for permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. So first, I'd like to thank my colleagues for the warm welcome to the council in um, helping with this transition. We have had a very busy, busy stated today, but um, I just want to be on record of saying that um, while I vote in support of these bill, these um, intros today, um, I recognize that there's still uh, much more conversation needed, um, especially with the community as we talk about reforming the NYPD. Um, I thank everyone in their support in the Arvin East project, also, also recognizing um, that it's a great start and there's much more work and collaboration to be done around this to um, help continue to enhance that program. Um, and so, I thank everybody once again. Thank you, and we're so happy to welcome you. Cabrera. Thank you. I'll be voting now on 20, 2224A, uh, 2118A, uh, 2220A, and I'm assuming we're doing the rest of later, correct? Correct. Okay, thank you so much. You can vote yes then. And I, I on the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chin. I vote I on all. Thank you. Constantinidis. We really want to uh, just welcome our new colleague, uh, Councilmember Brooks Powers. Welcome uh, to the City Council. We're really looking forward to working with you. And with that, I will vote aye on all. 
Carnegie. Okay. Council Member Carnegie. We'll come back. Councilmember Deutsch. Uh, I and all except for intro 2212, 2118, 1671, 2220, 2243. May I vote into resos? Not at this. Okay. Not at this time. Thank you. Thank you. One moment. Dharma Diaz. I vote aye, and I'd like to thank and compliment Councilwoman Samuels for, for being the voice. Thank you. Ruben Diaz. Here's an old. Thank you. Drum. Aye, and all. Eugene. I would I. Gennaro. I am uh, really delighted to uh, welcome uh, Council Member Brooks Powers. Welcome to the Council. Uh, I vote aye on all, with the exception of proposed intro 1671A, uh, and I vote no on that. Thank you for being a good sport now that you are no longer the newest member <laughs> to the Council. <laughs> Your shine moves quickly. <laughs> Gibson. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I'm Thank sorry, you. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I want to quickly speak about pre-considered Resol 1584, the Police Reform and Reinvention Collaborative Plan. Uh, I want to appreciate and salute our chair Adrian Adams, all of the work that you've done in the midst of countless meetings and briefings, the pain of losing your beloved mother, and yet you still managed to stay on top of today's legislative package. I appreciate you so much, my sister. I share the sentiments of colleagues who are frustrated with this process. 187 pages of a plan we received two weeks ago, expected to absorb and come to a decision, an executive order shoved down our throats from the governor with no input or support, and yet the threat of withholding funding Council from member, our city. Council, member, Council member Gibson, I'm sorry. That's one of the resolutions. We're just discussing the introductions right now. Okay. You can hold that fire, girl. <laughs> Are we voting? On no, the introductions, not, not on the resolutions. That's later. Oh. Okay, so I will be voting aye on all of today's agenda items with the exception of proposed intro 2220A, resolution 1538 a and resolution 1547, I will be abstaining. I'm voting aye on everything else on today's agenda. And I wanna join everyone in welcoming our newest colleague Councilmember Selvina Brooks Powers of District 31 in Southeast Queens. Welcome colleague, welcome sister. Thank you for making us a fabulous 14 members of the Women's Caucus. We look forward to working with you here in the city council. Thank you so much, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. Joe Nye. Majority Leader, uh, can I take a pass at this time? Yes. Gordonchik. Uh, thank you. Uh, permission to briefly explain my vote. Permission granted. I right. want to um, thank you. I want to wish everybody who was celebrating uh, a most happy uh, Passover, a joyous season, uh, a joyous Easter. That wasn't me. Um, as we come into this uh, very holy season here in New York City. I want to uh, welcome uh, our newest colleagues, uh, Council Member Brooks Powers, and congratulations on the Auburn uh, East. I know that that has been percolating uh, for uh, more than a generation and um, how wonderful for you to be able to, to start that work and continue that work uh, in your first meeting uh, as a member. 
Uh, I am voting um, no on two pieces of legislation today, uh, 2243. I had previously voted no on the last extension. Um, and I am also based upon um, the very persuasive uh, Councilman Miller, I am also gonna vote no on 2224 and I and all the rest. And I ask that everybody who is listening to this, remember those who are hungry in our city. We have much work to do uh, feeding New Yorkers. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Carnegie. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time so, so violence in our community is not inevitable. To say that violence spreads like a disease is not a metaphor. It's what the science now shows. Violence meets the dictionary definition of a disease and hundreds of studies now confirm that violence is contagious. It's good news because we have highly effective and time-tested public health methods used worldwide to stop the spread of contagious diseases. Today, we're introducing a range of legislation that will treat the causes of violence and not use brute force to punish behaviors that could have been prevented. I enthusiastically urge my colleagues to support the $15 million towards the council's critical anti-violence and hate violence prevention initiatives. I urge the restoration of funding for vital agencies that are critical to the social and emotional well-being of New Yorkers, including the Department of Parks and Recreation and the Department of Youth and Community Development. I applaud the proposal for $14.5 million to fund a new mental health case management program to provide 850 people with services in underserved communities. I'm proud to support an additional 4.4 million to double fiscal year 2021's available funds to intensive mobile treatment teams, which serve those who, with recent and frequent contact with mental health, criminal justice, and homeless service systems. I urge immediate passage of 25 million in funding for the city's cure violence program starting in summer 2022, and a commitment to triple the city's cure violence program workforce. While some might find any excuse to maintain the status quo and find ways to argue against these important proposals, we shouldn't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Please join me in making today a historic day in the transformation of policing in New York City. Will it end all of our policing problems? No, but today represents a significant step in the right direction. I urge my colleagues and my city to move forward instead of backwards. We have the chance to be on the right side of history by passing this set of reforms. Thank you, I vote on. Thank you. Council Member Holden. I vote no on all except intros 2243A, 2218A, and Reso 1582, and all land use applications with accompanying resolutions, in which I vote yes. Thank you. One moment. Kalos. I know. Ku. I. Pazlowitz. May I be excused to explain my vote? First of all, I want to welcome. Council member Brooks Powitz. It's great. Good now Queens has three women. So that's pretty good. And I want to also want to wish everybody uh, a happy Passover and a happy Easter. And I vote aye on all. Thank you. Lander. Request permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thanks very much. I also want to welcome Councilmember Brooks Powers. Um, I'm joining family members of those killed by police and over 50 civil rights organizations in voting no today on the so-called police reform plan proposed by Mayor de Blasio. The plan does not address core issues of police accountability, make a serious effort to transform public safety or ensure our communities have the services and infrastructure they need and deserve. It'll lead to further increasing the NYPD's budget, already one in six of all city employees and already set to grow by $195 million next year, while the mayor's preliminary budget proposes to cut CUNY, youth services, and sanitation. It's egregious that the final version of the plan was not made available for consideration until yesterday. The council should not yield to the governor's bullying, threatening to withhold state funding if we don't accept the mayor's so-called plan. Council Member Lander, I, 
Councilman Lander, I apologize. Similarly to Councilmember Gibson, who also wished to speak on this, we're going to have that discussion during resolutions. Respectfully, Madam Majority Leader, this is at the heart of the police reform package that we're voting on today, but, but I'll move along. I just want to say it was not a thorough, serious, or inclusive process, and it's not a thorough, serious, or inclusive plan. On the other bills on the calendar today, uh, I'm voting no on intro 2212. Um, while we certainly need a stronger approach to bias-based policing and racial profiling, this bill will not do it. It reaffirms the commissioner's sole discretion over police discipline. It allows the NYPD to contract for its own overseer on a topic it's failed on. And it requires an NYPD finding before the CCRB begins its investigations in some cases. I do really appreciate the work of my colleagues in this effort, especially in including council members Adams and Gibson. I'll be voting aye on the other bills in the package, especially 1671, uh, intro 2220 of council member Levin and reso 1538 of the majority leader calling on the legislature to remove the police commissioner's exclusive authority over discipline. And I'm especially glad to co-sponsor and vote today for intro 2224, a significant step forward towards safer streets with less policing. After years of advocacy, DOT will have the opportunity to lead crash investigations, and that'll enable a victim-centered problem-solving approach to preventing traffic violence and greater transparency around the underlying cause of crashes. So I vote no on Rezo's 1584 and intro 2212, and I on the other items on the calendar. Thank you. Levin. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Hi, Thank I'm you, smart. Madam Majority. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I also wanna uh, welcome Councilmember Brooks Powers and uh, wonderful to have you here uh, in the council. Um, so picking up where I left off, um, uh, Qualified immunity, this is a quote from, uh, from Jay Schweikert from the Cato Institute, quote, qualified immunity is one of the most obviously unjustified legal doctrines in our nation's history, close quote. What our bill does today is establish a local civil right in New York City that mirrors those Fourth Amendment rights that we've had since 1792 and those 14th Amendment rights that we've had since 1868, where qualified immunity in this case cannot be used as a defense. Cases would still have to be proven in a court of law and the legal standard for that is high. The city may also fully indemnify individual officers. This bill does nothing to change that, but an officer would not be able to enter a courtroom and assert that the plaintiff cannot even commence a case against them because they are immune, unliable, in essence, untouchable. These rights we enjoy under our constitution are not privileges to be granted and taken away. They don't apply to some people and not others. They are as fundamentally American as anything we hold dear. And they are what has drawn people to our shores generation after generation for over 230 years. And yet throughout that history, these rights have also been denied over and over and over again to generation after generation of Americans particularly black and brown Americans for over 230 years. This bill today makes it clear that New York City intends to uphold these precious constitutional rights now and in the future. I would like to thank Speaker Johnson and our amazing Chair of Public Safety, Adrian Adams, Chief of Staff, Jason Goldman, Ed Atkin, Kelly Taylor, and Johnita John from the Council of Legislative Division, New York Civil Liberties Union and Legal Aid for working with us on this, as well as my staff, uh, uh, Vivek Srikumar and my Legislative Director, Nicole Hunt for working on this bill. And I encourage all of my colleagues to vote aye on 2220A and I vote aye on all, thank you. Thank you, Council Member Levin. Levine. Thank you with warm welcome to uh, Council Member Powers and uh, I will be voting aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Lewis. Thank you, Mad Madam Majority Leader. First, I just wanted to quickly congratulate our new colleague, Council Member Brooks Powers, echo the sentiments of Council Member Anthony Samuels and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Myself. Uh Yes, and everything except no on 2228. 
Thank you. You lose your value. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank Time you. Starts now. I want, I want to also welcome Councilmember Brooks Powers uh, to the City Council. And I will be voting no on 2212A for all the comments that my colleagues have made uh, and I on the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Miller. My vote. No. Uh, I will be just voting no on 2224 and on 2220 i'll be abstaining i'd like to wish happy passover to all those who will be celebrating thank you thank you moya i vote i and all Perkins. I vote no on 2212A and I on all the rest. Thank you. Powers. Well, I want to welcome my uh, fellow powers to the city council. So many powers. The caucus is now too, too strong here. So welcome and very excited to have her joining us in the council. And I vote I on all. Thank you. Reynoso. Uh, permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. The past year has been painful in so many ways. Our city experienced tragedy on a scale that was unimaginable, uh, unimaginable. <laughs> this time last March. Through this adversity, a number of critical issues have come to light. One of which is the systemic oppression of people of color uh, and what they face in our communities. The suppression presents itself in many ways. Polluted neighborhoods, displacement from our homes, underfunded schools, and police brutality. When the nation watched as George Floyd was murdered in front of our eyes last spring, it awakened the rest of the country to the police violence that communities of color um, were all too familiar with. Today, we are taking an important step forward to begin delivering justice to communities that have been voiceless for far too long. This package of bills will make important advancements toward keeping our communities safe, and I commend the speaker and my colleagues for their work to make this happen. There is so much more work to do, though, and I'm calling on this council to not stop here. We all received a letter from 23 family members of victims of police violence imploring us to go much further than the bills we are voting on today. I have stood sh shoulder to shoulder with these folks for years, and they have consistently been left out of the police reform conversation deepening the wounds from losing their loved ones. It is incumbent upon the council to bring those most impacted by police brutality into the policymaking process. To not do so would be a process failure, but also a moral one. Moving forward, I hope that the voices of these who have suffered at the hands of abuse by police officers will not just be at the top of our minds, but at the head of the decision-making table. Thank you, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Riley. Thank you. I would like to welcome my colleague, uh, Council Member Brooks Powers to the council. Um, as a black man, also, I would like to echo the sentiments of Council Member Amprey Samuels. I think you hit it uh, right on the nail uh, with your statement earlier. I would like to vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Rivera. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. I wanna encourage all my colleagues to vote for my bill, intro 2243 today to extend the suspension of personal liability clauses in commercial leases until June 30th. So countless businesses teetering on the edge can continue to focus on paying workers and supporting their communities without the threat of landlords going after their personal life savings and assets if they have to shut down. We've fought and won in court to protect this law, and I'm proud that we are continuing with this legislative effort once again. I also wanna thank everyone who will be voting for the Article 11 tax exemption for three properties located in the East Village neighborhood in my district. 
Asian Americans for Equality, a trusted community partner in the Lower East Side has been working with families across these 44 units of housing on a conversion that will yield affordable home ownership opportunities for current residents. And I'm excited for this project to move forward. And in regards to the bills on police reform, I certainly believe that these are a continuation, not the end of our fight to reimagine public safety in New York City. And I appreciate Speaker Johnson and Chair Adams for their efforts. Additionally, the investments for key city services that are up for discussion are the exact kind of commitments we should pursue further in this year's budget. And with that, I vote aye. Thank you. Rodriguez. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. First of all, congratulations to our new colleague, a council member, a power and a Thank you to all the colleagues for voting on this package of legislation, uh, very important for our city. Uh, as I say in the bill that I had the opportunity to lead uh, together with the speaker, Corey Johnson, and my other colleague, uh, one of those being the transfer of the coalition investigation unit from NYPD to DOT. It, I think that everyone has to recognize that it, we still has a lot of challenges to make our streets safer. And the epidemic of crashes definitely is something that it, is so difficult to eradicate. It. And I had the opportunity to be working with many colleagues from Manhattan Moral President Gail Brewer to Public Advocate Jomani Williams to Brooklyn Moral President Eric Adams when it came to improving safety in our street. So today I'm happy that after we're listening to our DAs, we make all the progress and we vote in only with, with that bill, but also with all the bills that is so important for the whole city of New York. El proyecto, todos los proyectos de leyes que estamos votando hoy son muy importantes para la ciudad. En lo que tiene que ver con hacer con las calles más seguras, es algo que nosotros hemos estado trabajando con el vocero Corey Johnson, con líderes de la ciudad, como la presidenta del condado de Manhattan, Gail Brewer, Eh, con personas como Robert Carnegie, con otros oficiales electos como el defensor del pueblo Giovanni William, el presidente del condado de Brooklyn, Eric Gardens, y todos hemos estado trabajando para hacer de las calles, calles seguras para todos. With that, I go on. Thank you. Council Member Rose. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you. First, I just want to start by welcoming um, our new council member, Brooks Powers. Um, it's great that you've added another voice of reason to uh, the city council. Um, and I'd like to commend council member Adams for her tenacity. I'd like to thank and um, thank and commend uh, council member Amper Samuels for her truth and passion and speaking for many of us here on the council. I'd like to just second and, and say here, here to council member Levin, who, um, whose remarks about qualified immunity ring true. And I stand firmly behind council member Chin. Um, we have to obliterate hate wherever it exists. Thank you. And I vote. Did you hear that? I vote aye on all. Yes, thank, thank you, Catherine. Rosenthal. Um, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank aye. you. Um, and, and I'm voting aye on all. Um, Majority Leader Cumbo, I just yes. wanna thank you for keeping us all on the straight and narrow. Uh, you run a good meeting and I really appreciate everything that you do in running these meetings, it's not easy. So thank you. Thank you. Um, for yeah, I really want to thank Council Member Ampre Samuel. Um, it, it, thank you for, as as Council Member Rose said, thank you for your truth, for your passion, um, and just being the standout council member that you are. It's such an honor to serve with you. I also wanna thank council member Miller 
for um, his point of view and speaking so passionately and smart. Um, so I really thank him for that. And of course, welcome to my sister, my new sister from another mister, uh, Council Member Brooke Powers. Indeed, you are now co-chair of the Powers Committee. Um, yeah, and again, I vote on all, I on all. Thank you. Thank you. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Madam Majority Leader, uh, I'm asking for unanimous consent to vote on all land use items. Permission granted. Thank you. I vote no, aye on all land use Majority Leader. Items. Yes, oh. Mr. Parliamentarian. Hold on. Uh, are there any objections to moving forward with unanimous consent on the motion from Council Member Ulrich? Thank you for the correction. Seeing none, the motion passes. You may continue, Council Member. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, and thank you for the unanimous consent. Thank you to my colleagues. I'm voting aye on all land use items, uh, but I am voting no on uh, several uh, pre-considered intros. I'll be a no vote on 1671, 2118, 2212, 2220, 2224, 2243, and I on all others. Thank you. It's always our pleasure to make an exception for you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. Pardon one moment. Balone. Madam Majority Leader, may it be excused to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you, boss. <laughs> I just want to wish everyone a blessed Passover and an Easter season since we are at the holiest time this year. And welcome to our new Council Member Brooks Powers. Welcome to the Queen's Club, great delegation that we are. And for just a few comments on some of today's bills, no one can be charged in this council and not bringing police reform to the NYPD in this, in this city. Uh, many of the council members here have led that charge and we're doing that again today. Uh, I have to stand and speak about some of the comments that are being tossed at 2220A. We are not a judge, we are not a jury. We do not have the benefit of months of trial and evidence and depositions. What we're doing today with 2220A is telling an officer that in doing your job, you will now be exposed to personal liability, your assets, your home, your family, what you have worked your life to do is now in jeopardy in doing your job. Anyone's constitutional rights are always protected. This has nothing to do with that. You go to court, your, your unjustified stop and seizure is thrown out. You have your constitutional rights protected. We are doing one thing, we are exposing officers to personal liability. That does not go with the police reforms that we have been challenged to do and what we have done. And put yourself in the shoes now of those that we charge to keep us safe. Will you make that arrest? Will you make that stop? If you know that your personal home, assets, life are now subject to a lawsuit. That is what I wanted to bring to the attention. It's, it's more than a no vote on 220A. It is, is explanation. It's not about police reform. This is doing something deliberate to the police force. And day in and day out, we are being asked by the citizens of this city to keep us safe. Every day, there's another tragedy. If your district is 51% telling you to vote for this, I then you try. vote for this. But I'm telling you, uh, especially in my district and those that are around us, that is not the case. So with that, I vote no on 220A. I also vote no on proposed Reso 1538A. I abstain from pre-considered Reso 1583 and abstain on 2212A. Uh, thank you and God bless everyone. Thank you, Council Member Vallon. Van Bramer. Permission to briefly explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank Hi, you. Starts now. So I am going to vote aye on all except 
for intro 2212A uh, because I firmly believe that the police commissioner, whoever that should be, should have no role whatsoever in uh, determining or overturning uh, punishment um, or um, any other findings for police officers. Uh, and luckily there is a bill coming uh, and uh, Council Member Barron has uh, uh, led the charge with Council Member Amprey Samuel and uh, look forward to seeing that piece of legislation move forward and uh, implement uh, uh, real reform that I think is so desperately needed uh, to make sure that the police commissioner um, does not have uh, any role in determining a punishment. Uh, and in particular, what we see all the time overturning uh, even validated claims of uh, abuse. So uh, with that, I vote uh, no on 2212A. Look forward to uh, Councilmember Barron and Councilmember Amprey Samuels. Uh, legislation and uh, vote aye and all the rest. Thank you. Council Member Yeager. Madam President, may I be excused to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you very much. Time uh, starts now. Thank you, Sergeant. Uh, on, uh, I will, I'll try to just echo uh, without using all the words of some of my colleagues who spoke on these bills. Uh, on intro 2224, Councilman Miller, uh, I couldn't have said it better, uh, giving the DOT, the agency which can take three years to put in a, a traffic uh, camera, a speed cam, uh, 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 a traffic signal or, or a speed bump, uh, the, this important responsibility to me simply makes no sense. Um, the investigating vehicle crashes is important work. And uh, I, I just, you know, I'm in the council for three years, uh, two months, and 25 days, and I can't find one thing that the DOT has done right in my district during all that time. So giving the, this important work makes no sense to me. I'm going to vote no on that. Um, uh, 2118 uh, came from Government Operations, the uh, committee I'm honored to serve on. And, uh, you know, I found that it, neither the press community nor the administration felt this was something that uh, was necessary. It was almost a solution in search of a problem. Um, but here's the problem, at least the way I see it. It's going to cost the city of New York $660,000 in the upcoming fiscal year to move this office from the police department to the mayor's office of media and entertainment. You know, the folks who uh, shut down all our streets and bring in all those trailers and so that they could film law and order in our neighborhood. Uh, it's going to cost $1.3 million every single fiscal year thereafter, at least as projected right now. I didn't think we had that kind of money. I still don't, I haven't heard we do. So I'm going to vote no on that. Um, qualified immunity, uh, intro 2220, Councilman Vallone often gets my attention because he comes uh, uh, shortly before me and I couldn't have said it better than he did. Uh, and as for Councilman Borelli pointing out that uh, we are hypocrites if we take away qualified immunity from, uh, from members of our municipal workforce and leave I'm it for ourselves, uh, he is 100% right. Intro 2243, uh, we heard a lot about the Constitution today. I like all of the Constitution, all of it. Uh, Article 1, Section 10 uh, uh, requires that the government not pass laws that impair the ob obligations of contracts. It's true that a court did uphold this law, but in that decision, the court said that it, this law does, in fact, impose a substantial impairment on contracts. So. Reasonable people can differ. I differ. I'm reasonable. I'm going to vote no on that. So to recap, I am no on intro 2212, 2118, 2220, 2243, 2224. Thank you very much for the additional time. Thank you, Council Member Yeager. Joe Nye. Majority Leader, permission to explain my vote? It's long awaited, permission granted. Thank you, Majority I'm Leader. Now. The finisher. Let me first begin by congratulating our newest council member, Brooks Powers. Congratulations. Looking to hear some of the great work that you're going to be doing for your constituents in our great city. To all my colleagues, I want to wish them a happy Passover and all the blessings of Holy Week and Easter. 
um, majority leader. I waited till the end because I really wanted to hear more from my colleagues on these very important bills. Uh, I want to echo the sentiments that have been made by Council Member Miller uh, in reference to uh, 2224. Nothing prevents DOT today from investigating any accident and making design corrections if needed on any of our streets. Giving this major responsibility to DOT just for the sake of saying we took something away from the NYPD doesn't justify what the objective is. If we're looking to investigate uh, intersections that are very dangerous to our motorists, pedestrians, and uh, others, then we can easily do that. And nothing, we don't need to pass any legislation that does that. DOT already has the authority. But it could impede the investigation of accidents, especially when there is fatalities or serious injury. And I am concerned about um, the in, uh, unintended consequences that can come about. So I'll be voting no on 2224. I hear from my colleagues, those that are attorneys and understand the law much better than I do, uh, and the comments that they made on intro 2220. Um, it's with um, much contemplating that I, uh, and after hearing from the legal experts and what this actually means and how this no law does not take away the constitutional rights that we all have, um, I'm going to I'm follow excited. some of the legal advice that we heard, so I'll be voting no on 2220. And I will be following the comments that have been made by uh, Council Member Barron and Menchaca um, in regards to 2212. So I vote aye on all, with the exception of 2224, 2212, and 2220. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Joni. Matteo. Thank you. I'm voting no on 1671, 2118, 2212, 2220, 2224, and 2243, and I and the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give the clerk a moment. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. I want to thank uh, everyone for today. Uh, I want to really thank Council Members Chin and Ampri Samuel for their uh, comments today. I really uh, appreciate that. And I want again want to welcome Council Member uh, Sylvina Powers Brooks, uh, Brooks Powers, I apologize, uh, for uh, want to welcome you. We're so grateful to have you here. And we look forward to working together. I vote aye on all. We're going to give the legislative clerk an opportunity to tally um, all of the votes so that we have an accurate uh, number before we move forward. So let's just give him a moment. In the meantime, while the clerk is tallying the vote, any council member who would like to vote no or abstain on any of the resolutions that we'll be voting on during the resolution section, please email the legislative documents unit to register a vote of no or abstain on any of the resolutions. Mr. Parliamentarian, just for clarity and ease sake, can you just give um, perhaps in the chat or send through the act email address that members should send that information to. Yes, we do not have a chat, but I'd be happy to email council members with the address they should send that to. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Madam Majority Leader, much appreciated. All items in today's general order calendar have a vote of 49, the affirmative, zero in the negative and no abstentions with the exception of the following bills. Introduction 2212A has a vote of 36 in the affirmative, 12 in the negative, one abstention. Introduction 2118A, 43 in the affirmative, six in the negative, no abstentions. Introduction 1671A, 
with 43 in the affirmative, six in the negative, no abstentions. Introduction 2220-A has 37 in the affirmative, 11 in the, in the negative, and one abstention. Introduction 2224-A has 39 in the affirmative, 10 in the negative, no abstentions. Land use item 741 and resolution 1588 has a vote of 48 in the affirmative, one in the negative, no abstentions. Land use items 743 and 744 with their accompanying resolutions have a vote of 48 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, one abstention. And the revised land use call up to vote is now 48 in the affirmative and zero in the negative. Thank you. Madam Majority Leader? Yes. I believe that all items have passed. Thank you, I apologize. My internet service uh, got disconnected, so I'm transferring over to my phone to complete the rest of today's um, stated meeting. So the items on today's orders calendar are adopted we will now go into the introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you. We'll now move into the discussion of resolutions. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any members that wish to speak on today's resolutions? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, the first three are council members Moya, Gennaro, and Adams. Okay, we'll begin with council member Moya. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, uh, and thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I just wanted to, to talk about uh, two of the resolutions. Um, one, uh, which talks about uh, taxing uh, the billionaires. Uh, we've seen the disproportionate impact that COVID-19 has had on black and brown communities, uh, disparities in health, education, and wealth. And it's been a fight for racial justice, not just this past year, but for way too long. We need urgency and action to bring equity and support to these communities. We need to treat black, Latino, immigrant, Asian, New Yorkers with respect and dignity. They are part of the people that make this country so great and have contributed to the success and well-being of this city and this nation in countless ways. The two resolutions uh, that I've introduced today uh, have a direct impact on these communities as we are fighting for racial justice. And I want to thank the speaker and my colleagues in the city council for joining me in this fight. I'm proud to be part of a legislative body that stands up for racial justice. So here we are. The wealth gap is not closing. It's exploding across New York. The very people that were on the front lines taking care of us, feeding our families and keeping our city moving, who paid taxes, contributing millions, providing relief for so many, were excluded from getting assistance during one of the worst pandemics of our time. Healthcare workers, food delivery workers, cab drivers, construction workers, janitors, building and house cleaners, and so many others. For us to work towards a real recovery from COVID-19 means that we cannot leave behind those that have suffered the brunt of this pandemic and who contributed and sacrificed so much for us. It means that the rich keep getting richer while New Yorkers struggle to make ends meet after not only putting their lives at risk for us, but becoming ill from COVID, losing their jobs, or even worse, losing a loved one. New Yorkers 120 billionaires are 87.7 .7 billion richer than they were in the beginning of the pandemic and they're not dealing with the heavy burden of how they will pay for rent or get their next meal. That is why I introduced this resolution calling upon the state legislature to pass and the governor to sign to establish the billionaire mark to market tax act. Is the revenue generated to uh, establish an excluded workers fund. The imposition would raise uh, taxes to 23.3 billion in its first tax year and 1.2 billion or more in more subsequent years. 
the billionaires wealth tax would raise the billion uh, would raise billions that we urgently need to create the opportunity for 274,000 people including 187,000 undocumented workers and 87,000 people leaving incarceration to get much needed relief after this has been a devastating year and i just uh, ask everyone to uh, vote in favor of this and i want to thank the speaker for his partnership and to the staff that worked on this rebecca chasen noah brick uh, jason goldman uh, megan tadio benham and Carolina Valencia uh, from my office. Uh, with that, thank you, Madam Majority Speaker, and uh, to all my colleagues. Thank you so much, Council Member Moya. Council Member Gennaro. Time starts now. I wanted to weigh in on uh, proposed Reso 1538A regarding the police commissioner's power over discipline. Uh, I believe that discipline for any non criminal act of any city employee is an executive function and this state bill supported by this rezo in my opinion infringes on the power of the mayor as exercised by the pc the ccrb is free to refer an action by a police officer to the da for prosecution or to the pc for discipline in a non-criminal matter but for the ccrb to act as the pc is a usurpation of mayoral power in my opinion I'll be voting no on this resolution and urge my colleagues to vote no. Uh, the next item would be uh, resolution 1547 regarding residency requirement for uh, New York City officers. Uh, I'll quote the mayor from last August. He said, quote, a lot of NYPD officers who happen to be people of color are living in the suburbs for purely economic reasons because they can't find enough affordable housing here. We should have a real public debate about it, but we should be mindful that it's not as easy an equation in New York City as it is in a lot of other places because of the pure cost of housing, close quote. I tend to agree with the mayor's statement, so I'll be voting no on this resolution. I urge my uh, colleagues to vote no. And with regard to the uh, mayor's uh, police reform package, I don't know the resolution number, uh, but uh, I will be voting to uh, support that resolution, and I wish to be I wish to be associated with the speaker's remarks uh, on this uh, police reform report or whatever it is that the mayor did. And I uh, thank Councilmember Adams for all the work that she did on the package of bills today uh, and what she did regarding to the uh, mayor's proposal in the face of personal tragedy. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. We'll now go to Council Member Adams. Time starts now. Thank you once again, uh, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, the mayor's plan mandated by the governor's executive order, which the council had only 12 days to review and revise if not passed. The governor's office could withhold vital state and federal funding from us. Not a few hundred thousand dollars, but billions of dollars desperately needed to help the city rebound from the greatest health crisis of our lifetime. Given the current climate and condition of the state, I'm not willing to leave our fate in those troubled hands. The city council negotiated concrete changes and investments in the plan for our city, largely due colleagues to the demands of this council, many Sessions were made. Among them is securing over $70 million to expand public safety alternatives to policing and incarceration and adding an additional 5,000 new seats for SYEP this summer, something that we fought so hard that Council Member Rose always champions in this council. Additionally, the council rejected changes that would lead to expanding the NYPD's footprint and an already bloated budget. And we mandated deadlines and public engagement. Some of my colleagues feel that today's legislation goes too far. I get it. Some of my colleagues feel that this legislation doesn't go far enough. I get it. Colleagues, the plan is not ideal and I honestly can't celebrate it. I won't celebrate it, but it's just the beginning. As chair of the Public Safety Committee, I know there's a lot more work to be done. I'm inspired. In New York City's NYPD 
And I am committed to changing policing in New York City's NYPD. I want to thank all of the advocates who worked with us, our legal partners, our communities, yes, our hurting communities worked with us. I want to thank Arbor Rice, Chief Executive Officer of the New York Urban League. I want to thank Jennifer Jones Austin, CEO of the Federation of Protestant Welfare Agencies. And I want to thank Wes Moore of the Robin Hood Foundation for really, really getting out there in our communities and assisting us. We appreciate you all and look forward to your continued partnership on this very, very important work. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, for the time. Thank you, Councilmember Adams. Are there any other members, Mr. Parliamentarian, that wish to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council Members <laughs> Barron, Riley, and Levin. All right, you may begin, Council Member Barron. Time starts oh, now. You. Madam Majority Leader, thank you. Wow, we are at a critical point here with this, what I see, sham, what I see as a wink and a nod from the police commissioner with crossed fingers behind his back as he may be raising his hand. And I say that because we have heard from this commissioner over the years that he does not believe police officers treat black communities any differently than they treat white communities, quote, end quote. But now, because this is a plan that says they're looking at racialized policing, he understands, oh, we do need to look at that. I don't believe him. Nor do I believe that this plan that talks about all the training that will be given to police officers will have any impact. Because remember, Akai Gurley was killed by Peter Liang, who was trained not to take his gun out of his holster, not to put his finger on there, and to ask who's there. That didn't happen. So now we're talking about more money to the NYPD for more training that doesn't get any results. Results in people who are unarmed and innocent being killed with no accountability. The, the report, the letter which the NAACP Legal Defense Fund said highlights something I want to call. The draft plan does not specify how the city will change the decades of entrenched racially discriminatory practices. It indicates that NYPD will undergo an independent review to quote, identify and assess persistent structures of racism within the department. But the NYPD is already under the supervision of a federal court and an independent monitor. Following multiple lawsuits, and though the draft plan quickly glazes over these lawsuits, right. noting that the federal monitorship has changed the culture and fabric, the reports of the independent monitor suggest otherwise. According to the independent monitor's October 2020 status report through the Floyd court approved uh, NYPD revised race policy barring racial profiling, the NYPD is not yet in compliance with implementation of the racial profiling policies. The monitor found racial disparities in the NYPD's stop and frisk and noted that the department stop reports were quote, deficient in articulating reasonable suspicion for stop and frisk and legal justification for searches. The draft plan does not address these failings. Rather, it declares that the city, quote, has ended the era of stop and frisk, quote, reformed its stop and frisk policy and training and justifies the NYPD's nearly 12,000 stops and frisk in 2020, uh, with the majority of those encounters are still disproportionately black and brown. We are allowing a governor that has often been, been described as a bully to threaten to not give us the funds that we need. And I don't believe that the police officer, Commissioner Shea, has any kind of Damascus Road experience to really change what he has said over the years is his belief. And we're not going to be able to talk about defunding the police or reducing their funding with a plan that in fact gives them more money to increase their interaction in black and brown and low-income communities, increase their interaction with youth 
who say that they feel that they've been criminalized does not talk about reducing the SSA's uh, following policies of the police department as they interact with children in the school. I urge my colleagues to vote no on Reso 1584. It does not do what we need to have done. It's only uh, uh, crumbs that are being thrown and it will have no far reaching or substantial impact on the over-policing, the racialized policing and the criminalization. Thank you for the extra time. Thank you, Council Member Barron. We will now go to Council Member Riley, followed by Council Member Levin. Time starts now. Thank you, Majority Leader. I would like to commend my colleagues in government for their hard work that went into this police reform package. But respectfully, I must admit that I believe we have so much further to go. My experience as a Black man and the ongoing experiences of Black and Brown communities cannot and will not be addressed in this one package or single bill. The resolution to police reform is complex and will require a collaborative approach when discussing and implementing solutions. We must further our efforts to ensure police accountability and transparency. I want to emphasize that this plan is only, and I want to emphasize this again, only the first step and many more steps to follow. And I look forward to continuing this important work with my colleagues in government to implement sound, meaningful and impactful legislation that would change the social norms of black and brown communities around our nation. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll now go to council member 11. Time Thank, you now. Thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader. Um, I just wanna take this opportunity to encourage all of my colleagues to sign on to the resolution sponsored by Majority Leader Cumbo um, that would remove final disciplinary authority from the police commissioner. Um, the, the issue is very real and has serious consequences um, for our city. Um, the police commissioner uh, overrules the uh, CCRB um, and or the administrative law judges within the NYPD 71% of the time, seven times out of 10, um, a process happens where um, uh, we hear evidence, evidence is presented, the defense is mounted, and, and a, uh, a trial judge um, could in, uh, issue a sanction seven times out of 10 that's overruled um, by the police commissioner. Um, that is absolute evidence of a dysfunctional system, absolute evidence of a dysfunctional system. And if we are to restore any type of confidence in the police department's ability to have discipline so that there's no favoritism. There's no, um, that, that, I mean, we hear about the concept of white shirt immunity, um, that uh, those uh, of, a, of a certain stature within the police department are treated different than rank and file cops. Uh, we saw that just recently with Chief Monahan, who was essentially allowed to retire prior to having being called into the CCRB for, um, uh, for violations or potential violations. Um, so I strongly urge um, um, my colleagues to sign on to this, uh, this resolution. And I wanna thank our majority leader uh, who did an amazing job um, getting this resolution to the floor. I wanna thank um, uh, a man named John Tufel who was uh, instrumental in getting um, the information uh, to me. Um, uh, Ed Atkin and Kelly Taylor um, and our legislative division, um, David Nocenti um, from Reform NYPD Now um, and our, uh, the sponsors of the, the state uh, legislation in which this resolution is supportive, supporting uh, Senator Member Catalina Cruz and Senator Jamal Bailey. And please, 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 um, if you believe in this, please sign on to this resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Levin. Do we have any other members who wish to speak on the resolutions at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council Members Menchaca and Rose. Council Member Menchaca. Time starts now. Thank you, Majority Leader. And, and I thank you for the time to speak on this resolution. I'm gonna be focusing on resolution 1584. Communities in my district are demanding from us to, do, to reimagine what public safety looks like better 
public safety means more investment in our black and brown communities. This year, we must invest in schools, housing and jobs by defunding the NYPD and using the money for what we know will help our vulnerable neighbors so that they can recover. We need to pass laws that save our taxi drivers, protect our delivery workers and day laborers, ensure domestic workers are not exploited and strengthen our legal and social services to all. If we focus on guaranteeing that our essential workers who kept us alive can survive themselves, if we pump more dollars to services that we know work, if we can fully fulfill our responsibility to make government work for those who need it the most, then we are fulfilling our agenda. And I'm deeply disappointed by the mayor's police reform and reinvention collaborative, collaborative plan. This plan does not reduce the impact of over-policing or our, on our communities. Um, and the impact of over-policing on our communities appears to increase uh, with this already bloated department. And this is something that my colleagues have already spoken to. Moving school safety agents to the DOE is not what the police free schools group and our youth have been asking us to do. So I am disappointed in the process which the mayor's plan was developed separate and apart from our work here in the council which abruptly excluded the community's participation itself. But the mayor is not alone in this, uh, in this work uh, of leaving people behind. And I'm calling on our council to create more spaces for this dialogue, more time to do things. The budget negotiating team has not met since last year. Our democratic conferences are siloed into boroughs. We cannot have these conversations together as a team. And so I'm concerned that we're gonna end up in the same boat that we were in last year. Uh, and with that, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna stay, stay visible and vocal on this issue until that changes. So I will be voting no on, or say no to 1584. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Menchaca. Council Member Rose. Time Thank starts you. now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, again, I wanna thank Council Member Adams for her tenacity under fire from all sides. The New York City Police Reform and Reinvention Plan is a historic package of legislation that will increase accountability and transparency. Many of these items are long, long overdue and are things that we have fought for in this council for many years. Um, some of it matches with state legislation to give the CCRB the independence and authority that New Yorkers deserve. And as the chair of the youth committee, I applaud the $70 million um, that was funded to support non-police based public safety issues, including 5,000 additional SYEP slots for CUNY students. But like many of my colleagues, however, I have some trepidation about the rushed process to meet the governor's mandate. And shame on the mayor for waiting till the last minute to concoct a plan that should have had much more thought put into it and input from our communities. I fear that this plan does not go far enough. We did not have adequate time to flesh out all the details or to make much needed amendments. We have a moral obligation to our constituents to develop a plan that genuinely tackles some of the deeply rooted racial biases that have imbued the New York Police Department since its inception in 1845, the framework of these reforms must be centered on fairness, accountability, and transparency. And even after we vote on this package today, which I am voting in favor, we will continue to work tirelessly to achieve those goals. And that means through subsequent legislation. The, um, the task is not completed Time expired. And, um, and we're going to have to continue um, to work. And we must and we will. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Rose. Are there any other members who wish to speak on today's resolutions? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council Members Van Bramer, Amphrey Samuel, and Lewis. Council Member Van Bramer, you may begin. Thank you very much. Uh, first, I just want to say, uh, 
I wasn't planning on speaking until I heard Council Member Barron um, uh, speak. And I have to say, um, I always feel like I learned something when Council Member Barron um, uh, speaks. And I was always voting no on Rezo 1548. And I've already sent in my email saying that I'm voting no on it. But, uh, but I just feel even that much uh, more strongly uh, opposed, um, of course, li after listening to um, Council Member uh, Barron, um, first of all, <laughs> uh, doing anything because the governor mandates you doing it right about now should tell you that it's the wrong thing to do. Um, uh, he is in no position uh, with no moral authority uh, to talk about just about any damn thing. Um, and second of all, our mayor is complicit um, and uh, releases a plan uh, with, with a day uh, for folks to review it. And, and that just isn't right on something that's so important, uh, that's so central to the work of all of our lives and all of our careers, which has to be justice, uh, particularly um, for uh, black and brown communities who have been so, so um, uh, abused by this system. And, and so I just want to um, uh, amplify and, and lift up Councilmember Barron's comments and uh, associate myself with them, but also not just vote passively against this resolution, but actually speak affirmatively against it uh, and, and vote no on Rezo 1548. Um, we must do better as a city. Uh, we must do better as a people. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Van Bramer. Council Member Amprey Samuel. Time starts now. Thank you, Majority Leader. Um, I just wanna just quickly comment on the police reform plan. And I totally understand Council Member um, Barron's point. I just see this as a starting point to reimagining public safety in our communities. Um, this is far from anything concrete. It allows us um, as a legislative body to not just respond to an executive order by this governor, but it allows us as a legislative body to literally sit down and be intentional in planning public safety and looking at a safe and healthy community um, in a meaningful and strategic way with community. Um, that's how I see this. And um, as I started, as I, as I said earlier, you know, public safety is literally, you know, something that a lot of our community, the people, people that look like me and communities that look like my community, this is something that really hits home. And I do appreciate the work that Adrian Adams put into this, um, Councilmember Adams. I appreciate Jennifer Jones Austin, who has contributed in, in Arbor Rice um, and so many, you know, other people. And this does not at all include the voice of the real people on the local, local level. But again, I see this as a plan and a start. And if we do nothing today, we would be doing the same thing that we did last year or the same thing we did the year before that or like the years before that. And, you know, this is going to be a totally new council coming in. So we have to have something in place. And this gives us a start. And that's, I see this as an outline that will be filled in with the people as we move forward into 2021, I mean, 2022. So with that, I'm gonna stop. Um, and again, you know, thank you, Council Member Adams. Thank you, Council Member Lewis. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, I share the sentiments of my colleagues and just wanted to state that the NYC pol police reform plan is exactly that, a plan to address over-policing in black and brown communities in New York City. Police reform is important to me as a black woman here in New York City. And I can't understate how thoughtless, unacceptable and disrespectful it's, it, it's been to give council members less than a couple of weeks to thoroughly dissect and comprehend a plan that tackles one of the most nuanced and complicated issues that plagues our city. 
I was very vocal with our colleagues about changes that needed to be made to ensure that it was reflective of the demands of people that live here in our city who marched, who rallied, who protested against police brutality. And I recognize that this plan was born out of a sense of urgency from the governor's mandate and that state funding was hanging in the balance. Um, and this process should not have been rushed or given implications on the future of our city. And I, I disagree with it being interpreted as a one-time solution to decades of abuse, of harassment, brutality, and premature deaths of Black and Brown New Yorkers. However, I do believe that this plan can make strides to hold those in leadership accountable and create measures for transparency and obtain resources to address decriminalizing poverty um, and enhancing healthcare services and providing measures to help combat gun violence and neutralize the perpetrators. That change starts with us. It's just a plan, but we put it into action. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Lois. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council Members Cornegy and Ku. Council Member Cornegy, you may begin following the time clock. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, I just want to speak briefly about this, uh, the suite of bills and the reform package. Um, I just want to give some context. I've been around long enough to remember the hard work we put in to change the, the complexion and the ethnicity of the cadet classes graduating. We went from 6% 25 years ago to 60% now. All of that work uh, was so we could lead to a point now and that baton was handed to have this accountability and reform in place. And now we'll be handing the baton to the incoming council members, but not giving them an empty slate to work from. So this is a, a, a beginning in some sorts, but it's also a continuation of the hard work that people have worked on criminal justice reform for decades. This, this is not new. But it is moving in the right direction and it's dedicated to those people who marched and stood and screamed and echoed their voices who demanded accountability and who demanded a matrix for accountability. All of those things that happen, this is not in and of itself. We've had reforms and reform bills that I signed on to. We've had the Eric Garner chokehold bill. We've had the, the accountability matrix bill. And now we have this package in addition to that. So we're moving forward and those coming in in this new incoming council class actually have some solid fat groundwork to work and move the needle forward even further. So this has been a continuation, changing uh, the, the police cadet um, minority. And if you look at the, the, at the even the, 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 the hierarchy has changed considerably in the police department. It's that level of change plus policy plus accountability that equal a fairer, more just system. So this is not perfect. I was not totally satisfied with it. But when I look at the context from where we've come, where we are now, and where we're set to go, this is moving in the right direction. So I want to thank you, Adrian Adams, for bearing the shouldering the burden of having to get hit from all sides and everybody else who had something to do with this. Jennifer Jones Austin and Alva Rice and all of those who are responsible for this. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Cornegie. We'll now move to Council Member Ku. Time starts now. Uh, I just want to say I want to welcome uh, Council Member Brooks Powers uh, to become our colleagues and happy Passover and happy Easter to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Ku. Are there any members at this time moving forward that wish to speak specifically and only on today's resolutions that we are about to vote on? Council Member Chin. Council Member Chen, you may begin. Uh, uh, thank uh, you. No. Thank you, Majority Leader. I do want to speak on the resolution about the, uh, the police reform plan. And I heard from my colleague, and especially colleagues that I've served with in the past, this is our 12th year, this is our third term together. And we've been fighting for police reform since day one. And we made progress, and this will continue that progress. And it is really important for us to make sure that some of these programs are being implemented and it has to reflect in this year's budget. So the fights continue, but we have to 
take our responsibility uh, to vote on this resolution today. We don't want the state to withhold any funding from the city, no matter what. As one of my council members said, I think council member Abel Samuel, we don't want to leave any money on the table, right? And I think that our work has to continue. It's not perfect, but it is our job to move forward and to make it happen. So I really want to thank council member uh, Adam for your leadership on this and my colleague in the Black Latino Asian Caucus. We have to take a stronger leadership role in this and we have to make sure the budget reflect that. Thank you. Council Member Reynoso. Council Member Reynoso, you may begin. Time starts now. Thank you. I just wanna uh, echo uh, Council Member Barron's points, but also just wanna um, just communicate to my colleagues that we are going to have a budget process where these types of issues are constantly raised and, um, don't, and don't get pushed to the level where we affect meaningful change for our communities, right? If we're going to continue to dabble in incrementalism when it comes to the changes we wanna see in the police department, then let's just call it what it is and that we're not looking to substantially reform the police department in a way that it brings justice to our people. Instead, we keep trickling um, in reform. Um, we don't make significant cuts to the budget um, that uh, speak to um, the resources that we truly need, which is secure housing, secure education, secure health care. That's where our communities need their money. Their money. And if we're not going to have those conversations, um, it, it could be problematic. But I would also say that the other side doesn't play the game that we're playing. When Trump was in office, they didn't dabble in incrementalism. And they're currently looking to take away our, our, our voting rights, right? They're like they don't, they don't play the same games we do. They go 100% every single time. And I think it's about time we stop thinking that we're going to be able to make significant progress moving this slowly and start actually being more aggressive about exactly what we're looking for. So I'm going to be voting no on that resolution as well. But I do want to say there are some good resolutions in this, in this uh, package. And one of them is uh, Council Member Majority Leader Lori Cumbo's uh, bill, um, which I think is a, a significant step forward to finally holding folks accountable and taking that responsibility away from, you know, self-interested commission. So thank you. Uh, and again, I want to make sure that it's clear that I vote no on the, you know, the mayor's resolution for police reform. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Reynoso. Are there any other members who wish to speak at this time, Mr. Parliamentarian? No, Madam Seeing Majority none. Leader. Seeing none, we will now have a voice vote on today's resolutions. If you wish to vote against or abstain from either of today's resolutions, please email the Legislative Documents Unit. Mr. Parliamentarian will send that information to you. I'll now read today's resolutions into the record. Resolution 1538A calls on the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign S5252 forward slash A6012, which would remove the New York City Police Commissioner's exclusive authority over police discipline. Will all those in favor say aye? Aye. 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 Uh, <clears throat> All opposed? Say nay. No. Any abstentions? The ayes have it. Resolution 1547 calls on the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign. S2984 forward slash A1951 which would require New York Police Department officers to live within the five boroughs of New York City. Will all those in favor say aye? Aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Nay. Any abstentions? The ayes have it. 
Pre-considered resolution 1583 calls on the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign S.4482 forward slash A.5092, which would establish the Billionaire Mark to Market Tax Act and to use the revenue generated to establish an excluded worker fund. Will all those in favor say aye? Aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Any abstentions? The ayes have it. Pre-considered resolution 1584 is a resolution adopting a plan pursuant to state executive order number 203. Will all those in favor say aye? Aye. 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 All opposed say nay. 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 You can only say nay once. Nay. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> I knew that was you. Any abstentions? The ayes have it. Nay. We will now move into general discussion. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Mm. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any members who wish to speak to, on today's general discussion? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council members Barron and Lewis. All right, Council Member Barron, followed by Council Member Lewis. Time uh, starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. First, I want to uh, again welcome our new colleague. I think I misspoke her name. I believe it's Brooks Powers. I want to correct that on the record. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I want to wish all of my colleagues who are celebrating Passover and who will be celebrating Resurrection Sunday a happy, safe, and great holiday. I want to talk today about the introduction of my legislation that will talk about establishing an elected civilian review board. This is legislation that has been three years in getting to this point. And it's legislation that I was asked to sponsor. And I'm proud to say I'm sponsoring this in conjunction with my colleagues, Jimmy Van Bramer, as well as council member Alika Ampri Samuel. We are excited to say that there are three main components to this legislation. One is that the members of the community of the review board will be elected from 17 districts composed from the 51 districts that are in the city. They will be elected to serve four year terms. They will have to go get petitions and get on the ballot such as we do when we are running from office. The second main tenet is that this elected civilian review board, which is a part of what we're calling the Community Power Act, power standing for police oversight with the elected review, that they will have the ability to receive testimony, conduct hearings, do investigations, make findings, dispose of uh, criminal uh, discriminatory issues and will determine the appropriate uh, consequences for those acts. And all those things that we're now trying to squeeze in little by little are part of this comprehensive plan. And they will have the exclusive, thank you, just a few more seconds. They will have the exclusive authority to determine whether or not to sustain an allegation and the appropriate consequences for that. And thirdly, this legislation calls for an independent independent prosecutor. So the members will no longer be appointed by our august body or by the mayor or by the police department, but they will be elected and there will be an independent prosecutor not appointed by the governor who uses poli who use police uh, to do the investigations, but they will be independent. I ask that you consider sponsoring this bill along with us and look forward to working with you as we push this bill through, okay? It's the Community Power Act, police oversight with the elected review. Thank you. Thank you, council member. We'll now move to council member Lewis. Time starts now. 
Thank you so much, Madam Majority Leader Combo, uh, for the opportunity to speak on two critical pieces of legislation that I'm introducing today. As we have seen over the course of the last several months, there is a glaring fault in our protocols related to oversight of public servants with a dangerous lack of police officer accountability. As New Yorkers protested, rallied, and marched for several days this last summer, we witnessed <laughs> countless police officers overstepping their authority, ironically assaulting New Yorkers protesting police brutality. Even with countless indisputable video evidence, there has been little to no disciplinary action taken against officers who pushed, shoved, and beat peaceful protesters. I think you all can agree this is unacceptable. This is why I am proud to introduce two pieces of legislation. Intro 2249, a local law to amend the New York City Charter in relation to the police department's duty to provide officer records to the civilian complaint review board and intro 2248 requiring the civilian complaint review board to conduct an, an investigation of any injury or death caused by police action. By strengthening the civilian complaint review board and granting them the authority to open cases on behalf of New Yorkers killed or injured as a result of police action, the CCRB will be informed of any such interactions. And we have the ability to hold a greater amount of officers accountable should they believe that their actions warrant punishment. Additionally, by requiring the NYPD to provide the CCRB with officer records, the CCRB will have comprehensive information to make an accurate assessment of whether, of whether there was any wrongdoing on any part of uniform officers. I my colleagues who fought hard last summer for increased police accountability to sign on to intros 2248 and 2249. Thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Council Member Lewis. Are there any other members who wish to speak or we will conclude this meeting? The last council member who wishes to speak is Council Member Adams. Council Member Adams, you may begin. Time starts now. Thank you so much once again, uh, Madam Majority Leader. You've done a phenomenal job today. It's been a really, really long stated meeting. Um, I, I just wanted to take an opportunity just to say happy Passover to all who celebrate. Happy Holy Week to all who celebrate. And just to once again express to my colleagues that uh, from my heart, this work that we do isn't easy. Um, and it definitely isn't for the faint of heart. Uh, tough decisions are made by all of us on a daily basis. So I just want to thank you colleagues for your commitment to serve no matter what our differences are. I also wanted to make sure that I thanked everyone that worked so hard to help me climb this mountain today in this legislative package, Speaker Johnson, Jason Goldman, Ebony Meeks Laidley, Kelly Taylor, Lewis Cholden Brown, Indiana Porter, Daniel Addis, Max Kemper Williams, Matthew Thompson, Aaliyah Reynolds, Isha Wright, Nevin Singh, Regina Pareda Ryan, Latanya McKinney, and my staff, Jamal Wilkinson and Benjamin Fang. It takes a lot to pull this girl together. Thank you all. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you so much. And again, I want to join in the chorus of welcoming our newest member, Selvina Brooks Powers. It's so exciting to see the Women's Caucus grow. And it's also exciting to see the intentionality of electing women to the city council and beyond. We're seeing it realized right before our very eyes. So we welcome you, we're excited to work with you and our voice just became that much louder. And I just wanna say in closing that I really appreciated the different perspectives in today's stated meeting. It's an important one, but I just wanna add in closing that over, the, over the, the last few years, almost on a weekly basis, we have seen mass shootings all across this country. But what we've also seen with these mass shootings is that as it pertains to white males that have perpetuated these mass shootings, we have seen police departments all across this country deliver the type of professionalism, courtesy and restraint in apprehending these individuals. And that same level of empathy and understanding is what we are demanding for black and brown communities in dealing with issues of law enforcement. We want that. 
but we understand that we cannot legislate empathy. And so this legislative package is critical to making sure that while we can't legislate empathy, we can issue penalties. And we should not look at this legislative package as punitive, but if they follow the same accord that they do when apprehending these mass shooters all across the country, the rubber would never meet the road on any of these bills that we've passed today. So I will close with that and now turn it over to Speaker Corey Johnson. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. As always, great job chairing the uh, stated meeting today. The stated meeting of March 25th, 2021 is hereby adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you.